Picard SF scale, and types of advanced cosmic civilizations. The Card SF scale is a method of measuring a civilization's level of technological advancement based on the amount of energy they are able to utilize. The measure was proposed by Soviet astronomer Nikolai Card SF in 1964. The scale has three designated categories, a type 1 civilization, also called a planetary civilization, can use and store all of the energy available on its planet. A type 2 civilization, also called a stellar civilization, can use and control energy at the scale of its solar system. A type 3 civilization, also called a galactic civilization, can control energy at the scale of its entire host galaxy. As we go about our daily lives, it helps to step back and take a look at the bigger picture. We are living in what seems like an advanced civilization, but let's not kid ourselves, we are still technological infants. In 1963, the Russian astrophysicist Nikolai S. Kardasev came up with a hypothetical way to understand just where exactly we fit in. He created what's come to be known as the Kardasev scale, a method of measuring how advanced a civilization's technological achievements are based on the amount of energy it can harness. As he outlined it in his influential paper, Transmission of Information by Extraterrestrial Civilizations, an advanced, probably alien, civilization would have the capacity to transmit radio signals far into the cosmos. Kardasev initially came up with three types of civilizations, a scale that has since been expanded in a variety of ways by others, focusing not only on communication technology but additional factors. A type 1 civilization, also known as the planetary civilization, has the capacity to harness all the energy of its home planet utilizing all the energy that reaches the planet, like solar, and all the energy it can produce, thermal, hydro, wind, etc. Kardasev described it as having, technological level close to the level presently attained on the earth. Physicist Michio Kaku thinks a planetary civilization should be able to control such things as earthquakes, the weather, and volcanoes, and would be building ocean cities. If that's the case, we are not quite there yet. Kuku thinks it'll take another 100 to 200 or so years for us to get to type 1 status. Carl Sagan thought we are currently at about 0.7 of the way to type 1. Once we get to type 1, what's next? We are likely to leave Earth, looking to draw energy from other planets. If we can become an interplanetary civilization that can make use of the total energy potential of a star, we'd become a type 2 civilization. One way to harness the energy of a star is to build a megastructure around called the Dyson Sphere. It would completely enclose a star, and capture all of its energy, then be able to transfer the energy for use by the home planet. Of course, this kind of contraption would dwarf the Death Star of the Star Wars universe, requiring amazing technology to build, and could take different forms. The initial idea by the physicist, and mathematician Freeman Dyson in 1960 was that such a structure would cover an area 600 million times greater than the surface area of the Earth. Understandably, the Dyson sphere has become a staple in the search for extraterrestrial life. If you can spot a Dyson sphere out in space, aliens should be not far behind. How close are we to becoming the Type 2 megastructure builders? It's a big jump in capabilities and would probably take 1000 to 2000 years to reach. A type 3 civilization is of another order of evolution altogether, probably taking 100,000 years, or longer to get there. Kardasev saw it as, a civilization in possession of energy on the scale of its own galaxy yep, you have to get a whole galaxy's worth of energy to get this advanced. Humans would probably be long since gone by that point becoming some kind of post-biological cybernetic beings. We are talking about a world where robots build Dyson spheres at will all over the galaxy, utilizing some yet inconceivable space propulsion technology to move around. Perhaps, such a civilization would also be able to get energy from black holes, or create energy-producing stars at will. What's next after such an advancement? 
Kardashev didn't see a need to hypothesize any farther civilizations, but prognosticators since then have proposed that a type 4 civilization harnesses the power of its own universe. Such a civilization in fiction would be seen to a lowly type 0 civilization as an omnipotent deity. A type 4 would be effectively mortal and omnipotent. A civilization this advanced could tap into the mysterious dark matter, and which could manipulate the basic fabric of space-time. Their capabilities may include instantaneous matter energy transformation, teleportation, and time travel. A type 5 civilization would be advanced enough to escape their universe of origin, and explore the multiverse. Such a civilization would have mastered technology to a point where they could build a custom universe. Once a type 5 civilization has achieved this height, they would have to have mastered the physics of different universe, and thus almost complete control over all basic parts of nature. Devices such as the monolith would be examples of their technology. A type 6 civilization exists in the megaverse, and is capable of creating, and maintaining the fundamental laws of universes, and multiverses. They exist in an infinite amount of simultaneously existing multiverses that represent an infinite amount of time-based outcomes, and inter-universal laws for everyone. They can also be regarded as paraversal as they exist outside, or in parallel to the space-time continuum. A type 7 civilization would travel, transcend, and ultimately oversee, or be the omniverse which is the collection of every single universe, multiverse, megaverse, paraverse, dimension, alternate or pocket, and realm. Everything is in the omniverse, and there is only one omniverse. It is likely that such power would come from an individual rather than a civilization, as the civilization would have transcended, and merged into a single mind that would encompass all thoughts, and all timelines, thus being omnipotent, omnipresent, and omniscient. This is the Creator, a God above all gods, responsible for all of existence, past and future.